Let's talk a little bit about the efficiency of these transmissions and the fact that, you know, there's minimal torque loss, maximum power transfer compared to other transmissions. What makes these special? There are several things that improve the efficiency of these units, and obviously one of the primary drivers, I mean, you know, obviously they want the cars to run good and people like them, but right. cafe standards and, you know, corporate average fuel economy and other things definitely drive the decisions made to reduce friction and to reduce torque losses in the transmission because that helps fuel economy. But one of those benefits where what helps fuel economy also helps performance. So you, know, you might pick up a fraction of a mile per gallon, but at 6,000 RPM, you're probably also saving a lot of torque that it's out of the transmission to the tires where it belongs. Great point. So, yeah, there's a lot of features, you know, not an unusual thing because most late model transmissions have a lot of needle bearings and stuff, and of course these do too. So if you're replacing a Turbo 350 C4, C6 with one of these, you're going to lose a lot of friction because those have thrust washers between all the components that you know, obviously create more friction. So it's got, you know, the latest needle bearing technology and probably a lot of those things are less friction than older stuff. Yeah. Because they've learned lessons over the years. Yeah. And the ULV ultra low, ultra low viscosity fluid that Ford and GM both use. Right. Um, that definitely helps. It's about, I think it's equivalent to like uh, SAE 10 motor oil, roughly. And interestingly enough, it's not a synthetic. So that would encourage me to, despite what the manufacturers say, change fluid more often, maybe 50, 60,000 miles, dump it, and replace the fluid. Yeah. But the fluid is very thin and it reduces friction. And the hotter the transmission runs, like any other oil, the thinner the fluid, the lower the friction. So that obviously benefits right away. The other thing too, as I mentioned before, there are six clutches in this transmission. Well, they've designed the whole power flow scheme so that four are applied at any given time and not, you know, just one or two like many transmissions would have older units. The reason for that is when clutches are not applied, there still is some drag between the frictions and the steels. Sure. And that's why when you're building a transmission, you don't want to set the clutch clearances too tight. Because if you do, you'll generate heat, you'll waste torque, and you'll potentially burn the clutches if they're really tight. Um, for instance, if you put a transmission in neutral and it creeps forward or backward, that means you probably got your clutch clearances too tight, unless it's just cooked. Yeah. But um, they... They mitigate that by only having two clutches off in any gear. Therefore, the losses are minimal. And they also put spacers between the clutch plates to keep the space between them so fluid can get between them and lubricate them and reduce friction that way. So there's another factor that they've done to reduce friction and loss. And, you know, it, it probably is not measurable in fuel economy. But it all adds up, but it might free up, you know, five foot pounds of torque coming out of the output shaft going to your axle. Exactly. It's obviously going to be a benefit in a performance application. What about the design of these transmissions in high RPM applications? Because obviously we know how popular the Coyote is, for, for example, and they can spin 8,000 or more RPM. Oh, yeah, and there have been a lot of people that have built LSs to turn 11,000 RPM, so... Sure. Yeah, RPM ranges are not going down, they're going up. You know? Sure. And how do these cope uh, under, under that high RPM? Isn't there some, some fluid flow that's beneficial? Well, there is a feature in these that actually was in the six speeds as well, and a lot of newer transmissions, but none of the four speeds have it. They have balance dams in all the clutch drums. Okay. So what happens is when a clutch is turned off, you know, you've got the piston, which is kind of donut shaped, the fly piston usually, and um, it's spinning. Well, there's residual fluid in there, and there has to be because you don't want the thing to go dry. Then when you have a shift, it's going to be unpredictable, and the 
fill times will be all off, so they want to keep the residual fluid in the clutch and not let it drain out. Right. But that residual fluid, you know, under high RPM, the centrifugal force pushes it out towards the outer circumference of the clutch. And as that fluid goes there, it actually starts stroking the piston and applying it, which reduces the clutch clearances. And I don't think it would, it definitely can't apply and it wouldn't carry measurable torque, but it's going to tighten up the clutch. And in extreme cases, it could possibly damage the clutch frictions, but it's going to obviously rob you of torque and and horsepower and um, heat up the transmission so that the balance dams sit on the other side of the clutch piston and they hold residual fluid as well and it's metered at a very low pressure right so that it's balancing that pressure and the centrifugal force trying to apply the clutch so you've got the roughly the same centrifugal force on both sides of the piston and the return spring then can do what it needs to do and push the piston back down to the bottom of the bore and keep the clutch clearances wide like they should be. So there's a measure in place to prevent the scenario you just laid out um, exactly. within these transmission. Yeah, okay. yeah. And That's good to know because, I mean, a lot of people are going to be spinning these things pretty hard. Oh, yeah. I mean, you won't with a diesel engine probably, but any yeah. Yeah. modern gas engine or, you know, anything with a big cam is going to be more likely to turn higher RPM. So these have that capability to support that right out of the box with minimal losses. And, and we all know that manual transmissions have less parasitic drag than automatics. That's always been the case. Is it fair to say that these sort of fall somewhere in the middle? And I would say so, yeah, because you not only have all those other drag reducing measures, um, but the pump is also unique. Well, the 4L60E actually has a similar pump. It's one of the few four speeds that did. Yeah. It has a variable displacement slipper type pump. I don't know if you've ever taken apart a power steering pump, but they work kind of in the same principle. But okay. the difference with these is there's a slider that controls the displacement of the pump and can reduce the displacement. So normally in an older or other transmission, when you've got excess fluid capacity, you know, the fluids don't compress, so the com pressure would go up dramatically, and um, you need to get rid of that excess capacity so you don't snap the case into or, or pop a clutch drum. Yeah. So normally what they do is just vent it back to the sump, back to the filter, but so if you're running like 150 PSI of line pressure in a specific scenario, like at, you know, half throttle or something, um, you're moving, you know, twice as much fluid than you need to. And th so that's torque coming from the crankshaft that's not making it out of the back of the transmission. Well, the variable displacement pump reduces the displacement to basically balance the pressure regulation. Okay. So that's how it regulates the pressure. When it reduces the pump displacement, um, which you can do with a variable, a vane style pump, you're basically reducing the torque load because when it's at maximum displacement, it has the maximum torque load in the engine. And when it's at you know zero displacement, it would have none. It ne never gets there though. So when you get down to that reduced displacement, you're pulling less torque off the crankshaft and that's available to go out the back. And of course, you know, their, their motivation may have been more cafe standards and fuel mileage, but it results in better performance and yeah the the moral of the story is parasitic drag is almost a non-issue every pound of torque that doesn't get used in the transmission is available to move you in the direction you want to move okay i mean that's just another benefit of running one of these some of these benefits are relatively small but they add up right you know there's so many things about these transmissions there's large and small benefits, and when you look at it as a package, the proposition's hard to ignore. I always heard something along the lines of 15% for manuals and 20 to 25, somewhere in that neighborhood, for an, depending on the manual, depending on the automatic, but it sounds like these are probably more in the high teens as far as parasitic loss. 
That's my guess. Yeah. And I don't know for sure, and we haven't tested that yet, but we're planning to do a comparison on that in the future. All so things point towards it. Number, numbers, yeah. 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 Obviously, hypoid gears consume power. That's one of the disadvantages of a nine inch. The nine inch Ford is a very strong rear end. And it's got that extra bearing on the end of the pinion, which is great, but it has a higher hypoid angle, meaning it has more tooth contact between the ring and pinion. Uh huh. But that also makes it more lossy. It makes it use more power. So there's compromises with everything. Yeah, G, a GM 12 volt or a Ford 8.8 will use less power than a nine inch, and that's why they're commonly used unless you really need a nine inch. So yeah, there's compromises, but I, and I don't know, you know, how much the rear end uses versus the transmission. But we're hoping to get better numbers on all that stuff and have a better understanding of it in the future. So generally speaking, maximum power transfer to the rear wheels. Um, Based on everything you just described, there's there's nothing binding up or causing any issues. I doubt there's an automatic transmission that is much more efficient at transmitting torque than this one. I mean, there there probably are some, but this has got this to be. This one's excellent. This, yeah, this is one of the best.